In the last video, we saw linear systems of equations algebraically, where I just gave you the list of equations, and what we saw was that a solution to this algebraic linear system of equations was just some listing of numbers such that if I took those numbers and plugged it in, all the equations were true. But then what we want to do in this video is to try to go and look at what happens geometrically. I want to investigate how can I visualize what a linear system of equations really is. And I'm going to begin by focusing on a two-dimensional single equation case. So I got this one different equation, and I say that it's two-dimensional in the sense that there's only two variables, x and y. By the way, when there's only two variables, sometimes you use x and y. If there's more, you usually use x1, x2, all the way down to xn. But for two, I'll just write it ax plus by is equal to c. Now, generically, if I put in some specific values for my a and my b here, I get an equation of a line. Indeed, if you wish, you could rearrange this and try to write it as a y equals mx plus b form, as you might have seen in high school. But nonetheless, equations of this form are going to represent lines. There are a couple of special cases that it's worth paying attention to. For example, if I make the coefficient of the x zero, then what I'm going to get is a horizontal line. And indeed, the idea here is it does not matter what the x value is because it's zero. And so all that we're doing is specifying some y value. So this is the equation of a line of some particular height y. Or alternatively, if I go and look at the coefficient of the y variable, well, then if I make that zero, doesn't matter what the y value is, this is just specifying what x is, and I get a vertical line. A really pathological example is the equation 0x plus 0y is equal to 0. This doesn't matter what I put in here, doesn't matter what the x is, doesn't matter what the y is, everything is a solution, so I sort of shaded in yellow to indicate that everything is a solution to this. And I want you to note that in all the examples, whether it's a line or whether it's all of the points, that what we've described here is an infinite set of solutions. There's infinitely many points that will satisfy this equation, but that's not always the case. So for example, look at this funky one. 0x plus 0y is equal to 1. But how could that be? No matter what x and y I choose, I'd get 0 on the left-hand side equal to 1. There's no solutions to this. So this is our first zero solution example. All the previous ones had infinitely many different solutions. Okay, so that was a single two-dimensional equation. What about two different two-dimensional equations? Something like this. I now have a linear system. It's two different two-dimensional equations. I get two different lines. And notice what happens. Notice that there's this little intersection spot. Now, that's kind of interesting. Uh, what that means is that to be a solution to the linear system, well, it has to solve both of the equations individually. So it has to be on both the green line and the yellow line. And the only spot that's on both the green line and the yellow line is indeed that one little intersection point. So this is an example that has one solution. So we've seen zero solutions, one solution, and infinitely many solutions. I can play around with these a little bit as well. What about this one? Here I've got these two different parallel lines. So there is no solution to this linear system because there's no point that is on both the green line and on the yellow line. There's no solution to both equations at the same time. Infinitely many to just the green, infinitely many to just the yellow, but zero to both at the same time. And the third pathological case is, okay, well, what if I got these two parallel lines, but what if I go and make them right on top of each other? But then I have infinitely many solutions because every point on the green line is also on the yellow line, so this entire line is a solution to both equations in my linear system. Now, what I want to point out to you is that so far I've had zero, one, and infinitely many solutions. Those were my three different cases. Could I have two solutions? If I had two different lines, that's what the individual rows of my linear system are, if I had two different lines, how could they intersect in some way that there was exactly two solutions? They'd have to sort of curve around and hit each other, but they're straight lines, they can't do that. They, they either have to intersect, in which case there's the one, or they're parallel but offset, in which case there's zero, or they're parallel and on top of each other, in which case there's infinitely many. And so I really get these three cases and only these three cases. And then it's even better. This geometric result, which looks pretty intuitive to us, that there's zero, one, or infinitely many solutions, I, certainly can't think of any other way that this would work with straight lines. This is true generally. 
Indeed, this is a theorem that applies in this general case, that if I have a linear system of m different equations and n unknown variables, there has to be either 0, or 1, or infinitely many solutions, but never 7 solutions exactly. Okay, so we visualize this theorem in the two-dimensional case, but let's try to see what's going on three-dimensionally. So, this is an example. Uh, right now I have one of them only, but it's one equation in three different variables, x1, x2, and x3. And equations of this form generically make a plane. This is an equation of a plane. I can take this plane, I can rotate my perspective around a little bit if I so wish, but this is what an equation in three variables is. It's an equation of a plane, except for pathological examples like where all of my coefficients are zero, or three of them are zero, but the constant is one. Funny cases like that. Generically, planes. Now, we're going to investigate exactly how to figure out these planes quite a bit, a little bit further along in the course, but for right now, just imagine that if I fixed any value for x3, that would just be a constant for x3, then you'd get an equation of a line, and then if I varied my x3, I would get a whole bunch of different lines, and a whole bunch of different lines all lined up looks like a plane. So it seems reasonable this is an equation of a plane. But that's only one. What about two different planes? Well, two different planes might look a little bit like this. And here's the key point. I have this line of intersection between these two planes. That if I have one plane slicing and I have another plane slicing, that along the middle where they slice, they're going to form a line, and that's infinitely many solutions. If I rotate my perspective around, I can sort of nicely visualize how I have this nice equation of a line. Okay, so two different equations, so two different planes, they intersect, they form this line, an infinite line of solutions. But what about three planes? Let me come along here and slice another sort of plane in at a weird angle. If I've just had the red and the yellow, they intersected along a line, and the plane comes along and slices that line. But what I get is therefore one point. There is one point that is on the intersection of all three of these different planes. And I can see that point as I transition and zoom my camera around these three different planes. So just as how in the two-dimensional equation, if you had two different linear equations, the perhaps most generic answer was that there was the one intersection point, in the three-dimensional equation, if I have three of these planes, they're also going to intersect at this one intersection point. Of course, there's all these other examples. Uh, what about this one, where I've got two of the planes, so the red and the yellow, I'm going to make those parallel. They're, they're directly on top of each other. Now, the red may slice through them, but the red and the yellow never touch. So this is zero solutions, because there is no solution to all three at the same time as the blue and the yellow do not intersect. So there we have it, we have this nice geometric interpretation of what it is that a linear system represents and what a solution to a linear system can look like.